you very much for clicking on this video. Really appreciate your company. I'm going to attempt to propagate a Fires Tancanvillier via its spikes for the second time. I hope that this experiment isn't going to be futile because I've left it too late. Ideally, there should still be some blooms on the fire spikes. They should be as fresh as possible for propagation to be successful. There's only one way to find out, and that is to attempt the propagation that I'm gonna try this year differently as opposed to last year, which failed miserably. Well, miserably not. We did get some fire shoots, but then they rotted away. My thinking this year is I'm gonna leave a lot more of the spike intact as opposed to trying to propagate each node separately. So first of all, let's get our spikes off the base. And for that, we need our big ones. Not the prettiest, but they are effective. So I'm going to go down as far as I can. I want as much of the spike as I can save. Let's grab the other one as well. Increase our chances of success. Eventually the orchid would absorb these spikes, but I want to try and propagate them. And I'll come back and put some cinnamon on the spike cuts. Last year, I did my propagation with sphagnum moss. This year, I'm going to use extractor fan filter, and I hope that I won't get anything slimy happening in the bottom of the bottle. I'm going to start with one of these little squares and push them down into the bottle like this. And then I'm gonna cut out more squares where I'm gonna put the spike through the center so it has a resting place on the wet pop filter and the rest of it will provide humidity around the node. That is the plan, so let's get to it. While I work on the setup of my little bottles, I'm going to submerge my spikes like you would bloom stalks into water to stop them from drying out and then work on the setup for the bottles. That's that part done. Now, last year I went node by node and cut the spike. This year I'm going to leave a lot more of the spike on because I'm thinking that last year it failed because whatever energy was in the spike deteriorated too fast and couldn't provide the little growth that did start to grow with any nutrients because I had taken off too much of the spike. Each node here is capable of producing another plant. So we're just gonna peel off one part and see what is underneath very carefully because if there is something already bulging underneath, we don't want to rip it off. This would become another plant if I leave enough of the spike on. So because it's at the bottom here, I am going to take the two dried nodes along and cut right here, giving me another node to attempt at growing with plenty of spike at the top. So we're just going to go a little bit below. And I'm gonna cut at, a, at an angle this time so that humidity can go into the spike. And this time as well, I shall be dunking the tip of the one propagation spike into cinnamon nice and generously to seal off that wound. Make sure that I close it so that no other orchids get affected. I'm going to leave these dried out sheaths on here. There are nodes underneath here. I can feel some bulges. I'm gonna stick with the fresh one as these are not going to be in a too humid environment. 
They should be fine. I shouldn't expect any rotting there. What we need to do now though, is get some hob material around this part right at the base of it so that we can encourage this node to grow and into the bottle it goes. Let's peel another one off and see what we discover underneath that one. See, the higher up we go, the less of an opportunity there seems to be. This one's not quite as pronounced, but you never know. So all I'm going to do here is cut just the top off to make it look a little bit more sightly. Seeing as I'm not putting a dome on these, they can be as long as they want. Seal that off with some cinnamon. And I'm going to repeat that with the next spike. We cut through a node there. We'll take that off so it doesn't rot on us in the bottle. Slowly peel off this one right here. And let's count. This one looks a lot fresher, but I want to get to this node as my next base. So I'm going to cut it right here. There we have them. Now, difference from last year, I've got a lot more spike that each node can absorb. I have a lot less propagation options, but hey, it's about the energy that each node will need in order to be able to progress and develop properly. And you can see that I have them right above the hob material. If it was sphagnum moss, same thing, right above them. The stems are submerged in water and then there's plenty of humidity around them and hopefully this time around this will be successful. Not that I have any takers at the moment for Fias Tank and Villiers but maybe in three years if they all make it that would be cool. Fingers crossed. Thank you so very very much for watching. Have a wonderful day everybody. I appreciate your time very much. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.